So this bullshit about me not being able to be around people, this started with a ridiculous lie that my ex-partner Giovanni Consalvo started to do so he could cover his own ass um, and get out of work and do un well, undesirable behavior. So this has now gone on since 2009. Because of this, I had certain people, groups and organizations harass me and unbeknown to me, I'm like, well, for what? Because apparently I wasn't going out and being around people, but I was actually out around people all the time. Um, basically until I had a chronic immune issue and um, had pneumonia when I had to rest and recover from that. So, which is understandable. So basically, you know, let me just oh, turn this stereo off in the kitchen. So um, background noise. So basically, um, we're talking about a scam. Um, it is a scam. Hey, hey, Google, stop playing music. So this, he can't be around people bullshit started as a scam for Giovanni to get money from the government and to cover up the fact that he committed fraud and forgery. Now, he dragged George Jacobs in with this, which is what I've been saying for the last nine years. Um, it's not true, and it's actually hindered my life and caused reactions. Um, so... There was nothing to worry about after I was mugged after work. It was just physical health injuries. And here's the other kicker in this. I never knew Giovanni Consalvo when I was mugged after work, so I don't know why people kept listening to him anyway. Um, I met him a year later, and my injuries that I had from when I was mugged November 30th, 2007, I had recovered from or maintained by that stage. So I have no idea why anyone ever listened to Giovanni Consalvo. Um, but when I met him, he was broke ass poor with no assets, no belongings, no savings, struggling in massive amounts of debt beyond his means he would never recover from. He was living in a share house in Kensington and looking at moving back to South Australia where he's from. Now, he, I met him in August 2008. Didn't really start to socialize with him until um, September 2008. Um, he saw basically my what I had to, as a means to benefit and gain from for himself, to put himself in a better position. Now, I had money, assets, belongings, just sold my investment property. Um, you know, I had over 140000 just in one bank account, which I never had to spend. It was just sitting there as savings. So this all started with a lie from a partner. I was never asked if these lies were true ever. So no doctor, no medical, no group, no organization, no workers comp ever came to me and said, oh, is this the truth? No, they just proceeded with believing a story they were told by somebody and then acting towards me, towards those wrong information. It wasn't until 2013 that I find out that what had been going on. So we're talking about a lot of years later, like four, four, you know, four years later in... Um, was that um, so when I got back from America in March 2013, I find out from George Jacobs that he actually had raised red flags with a crisis group and some other organizations very worried about me just to come around my place and check on me. I'm like, well, that's odd because I'm not, wasn't in the country. Um, Giovanni was there and I found out Giovanni was at my apartment with other people having sex parties and drug parties and everything else while I was away for a month. So I end up finding out that Giovanni actually had told his employer at the ATO, his friends at work, so it's Nazana, Lara, his family, my family, friends of mine and other people, so he could scam. He was running around to people, including George Jacobs, and saying, Justin's, you know, having an episode, you know, he's really bad, he's got to be at home this month, blah, blah, blah all this bullshit. Um, he needs time off work to look after me. So he actually got letters and said he was a carer, which he was never carer. He's faked these letters. He's scammed an organization. He's committed fraud on a federal level or fraud, and he's committed forgery. So he should be serving a 20-year jail sentence for both those crimes, or 10 years for each, because it actually has really badly hindered my life. So the first I was aware of any of this was in 2013. And here's the other thing. From 2009 until 2012, I was studying at Emmore Design Center, then which 
um, was in 2009. Then I studied at Coca Republic, which was affiliated with Emmore Design Centre TAFE College. That was in 2010. During the period of 2009 into 2012, I was working for Steve Hatcher Dimitri at Chili Pip. Seven, if I wasn't studying, I was there seven days a week, 12 hours a day. So there was the other period of time, and that was in St. Peter's. So as I was over in St. Peter's and more or Alexandria, I was nowhere near Giovanni, barely saw him. So then jump forward, the, this is where, so there's those years. It's like, well, hang on. I barely saw him from 2009 into 2012. And then in 2013, I'm overseas and I come back with George Jacobs, who should be losing his license to ever practice ever again. George Jacobs should be facing criminal charges as well. He never listened to me because in March 2013, I said, what do you mean you contacted organizations? I'm not in the country. George Jacobs didn't believe that I wasn't in the country. You can check immigration. I wasn't in the country. I was not in the country in March 2013. I planned that trip back in 2012 when I submitted my application for the green card. Started my application in 2011, submitted it in 2012. In 2012, I was looking at going to the US because I hadn't been there. I've been back since I was there in 2001. I thought I better go look around for apartments and things because I'm relocating. And um, 2012, I was too busy in Sydney. So I put that going to America off to 2013. So Giovanni was well aware the year before that I was going to, so this is back in June, 2012. Giovanni was well aware that in March, 2013, I'll be going to America. Well aware. So just so happens, then he goes to all these doctors and George Jacobs, and he gets all this time off work when I'm not in Australia. And he tells people it's so he can look after me because I can't do anything by myself. I'm an invalid. I can't go out by myself. I'm not leaving the apartment. He has to be with me. So that's fake. That's extremely fake and it's fraud. Now, jump forward the last nine years, you've got all these organizations, social workers, support workers, disability organizations who have jumped into this and believe Giovanni to date, including New South Wales police, who are believing him. It's like, but his lies aren't matching the facts. The facts are from 2009 to 2012, I barely saw him. March 2013, I'm not even in the country. So all the lies that he spread to George Jacobs and George Jacobs involved organizations into my life when I'm not in the country. And they were coming around my place then apparently, like the crisis group and all this shit. It's like, I'm not in the country. So it was 2013 was the first time I was aware of this. Then I'm um, still going through the green card process and so forth. Um, Giovanni's lies worsened. Okay, jump to, you know, 2015, and I've now had, since I was lied about in 2015, to date, organizations harass me. So because of these wrong information that went around, I decided to, and I started having organizations and people starting to involve themselves in my life from 2016 onwards, I deliberately played a prank. So Mark Kenner was one of the ones I played a prank on because it was so easy to tell that he was one of the ones that... Um, had been given false information from Giovanni, you know, I swear. So in IGA um, down south, uh, around this, was it 16th of December? No. No, it was just before Christmas, about the 19th. Anyway, it was the weekend um, before Christmas, uh, the week before Christmas, um, December um, 2016. So I played a prank on him in IGA. That wasn't real. However, it's still to date been taken as real. I'm there going, yeah, but that wasn't real. That was just me playing a prank acting. I'm trying to prove privacy invasion to get this person, you know, up on charges. Instead, it backfired on me and I ended up being the one paying the price for it. It's like, yeah, but that's not true. Police are fucking idiots. They're absolute fucking idiots. So then I tried again. I played a prank with the organization in Audi and then I was dragging around with Giovanni and Coles. Now, these are jokes. Uh, jokes to be not taken seriously. Um... This just shows the massive, well, Australia's a shit country. There's something, it's wrong. The behavior of Australia is way too left. America doesn't behave like this. It's just fucking wrong. It's creepy. It's weird. It shows the scamming organizations of um, support workers, disability workers, disability organizations. It shows how Australia's jumped onto this trauma and all this bullshit crap in an insane way where people are just getting jobs in it um, and getting away with, like, okay, yeah, I was mugged and robbed November 30th, 2007, um, physical health injuries, and I've had chronic illness since 2010 that I have to maintain. Now, certain people, groups, and organizations see me, oh, he's got damage, we're going to use him, and there we go, we've racked up our numbers. So we're going to say we're doing this for Justin. It's like, no, that's a scam. You're committing fraud. You are committing fraud. 
And that's gone on now for, well, this has gone on for nine years since 2015. Um, and it's a lie. It's an absolute fucking lie. Um, and this is a issue to do with these organizations and even government departments. And I'm sitting in the back going, okay, but you've been told continuously for nine years. The same organizations and people and government workers and so forth, when you turn around and say, all right, you've damaged my life and you've just cost me my return to work at Star Casino, so you've cost me my salary. Um, you've even cost me unpaid salary. You've caused exacerbation of physical health injuries and chronic illness. So that's a money value. You've also cost me my savings of well over 100000 in savings, but you've also cost me my expensive assets as well that I've had before I was mugged after work. So we're talking about the rare antiques and collectibles that I've had as well. You've upset my living home environment. So we've got assets, belongings, savings, and living home environment um, for nine years that is a compensation matter and that's where this should be taken. Then you've got them turn around going, oh, he just, he just wants money. It's like, wait a minute. No, I don't. I just want what I had. Thanks very much. Before you destroyed nine years out of my life. You're the one breaking the law and then you're turning around and putting it back on the me. Yet you're the government department, such as New South Wales Police. Um, you're the disability organization, support worker, social worker. You're the people that deliberately involved yourself in my life when I turned to you in 2016 and said, again, you've been given false information, but you are harassing my life. And here's the other thing. If people don't like, you don't involve yourself in someone's life, mind your own business. If you don't like someone turning to you and saying, hey, butt out of mind your own business, then why are you involving yourself in someone else's life to begin with. This is really what's wrong with this younger generation. They have no respect. You have got a generation of people younger than the age of 40. So basically anyone below the age of 40 that has this attitude that they're entitled to do whatever they want. And that's because they're raised that. It's like, sorry, no, you're not. You're not. I was raised with respect, which means I mind my own business. I keep myself out of someone else's life. I was raised proper. You know, my grandparents raised me correctly where I don't walk up to someone and tell them how to live their life. That's disrespectful. That's not what you should be doing. So if you do that, someone like if I walk up to someone and say, hey, excuse me, um, I don't like the way you're, um, you know, raising your child, for an example, or whatever. And they turn around to me and say, oh, fuck off. Well, I deserve that fuck off because what I'm doing is wrong. What I'm doing is wrong. Not their reaction towards me. Their reaction towards me is justified. My action towards them is wrong. And this younger, disgusting piece of shit generation that we have with the Y generation, millennials and Gen Z are raised with such entitled bullshit that they think they can walk up to, they can do whatever they want. There are these entitled little shits of people, this young generation. They're so entitled. They're raised with no respect. Um, they're raised with no private, like they don't have, um, you know, respect for people's privacy, which there you go with social media as well. Um, it is just a massive, huge disrespect. And then you've got the left that is exactly the same. So you've got, uh, I know there's a Royal Commission into these disability organizations at the moment, but it's not, um, hasn't ventured out far enough. There should be people who have, um, so workers, yes, um, Royal Commission or an investigation into workers or people who get paid saying they're doing things in disability or doing things to help someone that they're not, or I'm a volunteer or whatever, and I'm doing this for someone. There should be a lot more investigation. It should be a lot more scrutinized because people do scam that. Not the person who has the injury. Like I said, I have had an injury on my home from work, but I've never needed anything that was involved in my life. Um, these people just go, oh, he's got an injury. We can use that. It's like, no, you can't. You're not going to use me for your little fraudulent scam. Thank you very much. And that's what's gone on over the years. And then it's been turned back to me as, why? Well, oh, but Justin's like, don't turn it back on the me, mate. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't you fucking dare. Because no information came from me. Yeah, I was mugged and robbed after work and had physical health injuries that I recovered from, but no one spoke to me about that. Um, false information was spread for some time. And then, yeah, I got had um, a serial conversion with meningitis back in 2010, which caused uh, a lot of immune and health problems that I picked up from and then went backwards again when I had pneumonia in 2016. So I had pneumonia in May 2016. And th so I went backwards with that, had to you know fix up my health again. Um, so 
that's it. You know, like, and then you've got these organisations. It's like you should be shut down. You should be um, sued for your fraud that you've committed. You've damaged someone's life. You, in Australia, we just are letting this run wild. It's like this NDIS is like, sorry, can we regulate this shit? Can we investigate anybody who says, oh, but this person, so I'm an organisation that's going to do this for me. It's like, no, no, can we investigate it? Because the person that should be speaking is the person themselves. No one speaks for me. I've just watched my ex-partner, Giovanni, since I met him, use my situation so he could get ahead. He was an unemployed waiter living in a share house with nothing. I just watched him scam. And I, uh, you know, well, I found out majority of, like I said, in 2013, then I confronted him in 2015, and I started getting lied about since, and then it's been a nine years of an absolute nightmare. And you got fucking police. Like, here's the thing. Get a good solicitor. Go after New South Wales police and start putting them back in their place. Royal Commission should have happened to them a long time ago. Seriously, they're just stepping outside of what their guidelines really are. They maybe should read the New South Wales, you know, police handbook again um, and brush up on the law because they are. I mean, they've, you know, we could go back and say maybe we need another Woods Royal Commission like 1997. Um, disability organisations and other organisations need to be looked into a lot harder because it's like they're just all using mental health and trauma as a way to get this money from the government. It's like, this is ridiculous. I don't need a support dog. Um, I got harassed by people and organisations for years that made me react. I mean, mind you, 2016 to 2018 wasn't real. I was just playing a prank back at the organisations um, because they were stupid enough to monitor and surveillance me. And all I want to do is prove that monitoring and surveillance so I could then walk up to a solicitor and say, here we go, you said I need a proof for it. There's the proof of me getting monitored and surveillance, so now take him to court. Because I rang up back in 2015 and said, I'm getting lied about, I'm getting monitored and surveillance. And then it was like, oh, well, you need to prove that. I was like, okay, <laughs> easy. Watch me play a prank on him. Watch me act. And then once I prove it, grab those organizations and those workers, arrest them, put them up in front of a magistrate, and you can reimburse me all the damage that they could, they cause and cost me, including what it's caused my uh, reputation and credibility. And that's final. I mean, this is where Australia is just wrong. We desperately need somebody like John Howard back. And, um, you know, if I, I can speak for myself and I can tell you exactly what's gone on, but you know, no information came from me. You know, I'm the one that got blamed for it. Even with my workers' comp, I was like, but I was mugged and robbed on my home from work. I'm not responsible for what other people have done behind my back. Like, people like my ex-partner that used my situation for his own gain. Um, I'm not responsible for that. So don't tarnish my reputation because what someone else does. I'm not responsible for other people's actions. I'm responsible for my own actions and what I've said. And you didn't get your information from me. So... Don't attack me when your information never came from me, ever. And even when I found out that's false information, I've turned around and said, correct, that's not true. You didn't. And then now you want to make stories up about me wanting to get what's rightfully mine back because you caused nine years of damage. It's like, sorry, you're going to pay nine years of damage. Whether you organizations like it or not, you're going to tough it up and you're going to own your responsibility. So you're going to take responsible of your actions for nine years that has been damaging towards me and you're going to pay up and that's what you're going to do because people need to be made held accountable. Giovanni committed fraud and forgery and lied about me to get away with it. He needs to be held accountable. Groups and organizations need to be held accountable. Okay. And that's what's going to happen. If I did it, I've got to be held accountable to my actions. I didn't do it. In fact, I have stood up several times since 2015 and said, there's wrong information here. Can I have it corrected? Nobody corrected it as per me, but they've come back and attacked my life continuously. And I'm like, yes, but again, you're an organization that keeps harassing me with information that is wrong and I'm reacting to your harassment for nine years. And this is like this is disgusting. Australia is so fucked up and backwards because mental health should be up on charges. Mental health should be, well, we use mental health as this massive big money maker in Australia. I think America sort of woken up to that as how people can use an organization as a scam. Um, police, well, American police can be sued and taken to court. So can the council. 
So America's government, um, their police force. So if you make a mistake like a police officer does several times in Australia, in the US, you go and take them to court. In Australia, you can't do that. And that's the problem. So in America, the council gets sued. If it was Rose Bay police that made the mistake or caused the damage, Rose Bay council gets sued. Like, give you an example how America works. And that works the best because it stops people, makes them held accountable for their mistake. You made a mistake. You need to be held accountable for it, whether you're a government department or not. And that works. This way that things continue in Australia, damaging people's lives with no accountability, that doesn't work. You're letting people, groups and organisations and government departments get away with no accountability. It's like, well, it's anarchy. It's not, you know, there's no um, democracy.